Welcome to the second point five devlog for Destiny Break. So it's been a minute. I've been busy with the game and I got a lot done. However, this devlog is going to mainly focus on my tile map tool, which I've made serious progress on. I'm excited to show everyone what it can do now, so let's get right into it. Last devlog, I touched briefly on how I'd been previously slowly creating my environments for the game followed by a quick demonstration of a 3D tile map that I've been working on to speed up that process. Back then I could only draw individual tiles, but it can draw them fast. Really fast. It's come a long way since then, and I want to catch you up on its features as well as an attempted simplified explanation as to how they work. So this will kind of act as a devlog slash tutorial? Excited? Neither am I. Let's jump in. At the foundation of the tool are a few small modular prefabs I made with Pro Builder inside of Unity. These cover the sides and top of the tool, as well as a lonely single piece in its 30s whose mother is starting to lose hope. This is usually used as a starting point or if you just want a lone piece. For efficiency, each tile map has a standalone vertical layer. So if I place some tiles on one layer, followed by some tiles on the layer above, you can see these are two separate containers inside of a single tile map. So tiles only care about the layer they're on, not what's above or below for right now. Inside of each container is a dictionary based off its position. It also records its immediate and corner neighbors into two different lists. I use the count for the immediate neighbors to determine what type of piece it is and what direction it faces. The corner neighbors aren't used for the tile placement, but they'll be used later on. Here's a quick demo of how the logic works. For efficiency, I actually find the direction by subtracting all the offsets of the neighbors. But that's an optimization and not mandatory. Path drawing. Look at it. It's incredible. This was easily the most complex feature of the tool, and one of the reasons it took me so long to make, so it might be a bit difficult to fully explain how I did it. Anyway, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. But seriously, this was tough. I tried a few solutions at first, but I kept running into edge cases or the code was getting too complex to follow. Then I found this beautiful algorithm. After looking at it for longer than I'd like to admit in confusion, it finally clicked with me. It's brilliant, so I'll do you the liberty of explaining it in easier to understand terms. But I'll also leave a link down below in the description in case you're annoyed with my voice but still want to learn. You start with a map like this, 47 combinations. It's a lot, but it covers all scenarios between two textures. Each individual tile has a number, so that's our index. So when we place a texture on a tile, we use this chart to check that tile's neighbors. If a neighbor has the same texture, we add the corresponding number from that neighbor to our total. After we go around once, we'll take our total number and reference it on our index sheet. Behind the scenes, I've created a dictionary that converts the numbers to their XY value on the index sheet. And obviously, I've created my own index sheet. I know it looks like a lot of work, but most of it is copy pasta or rotated. I added some touch up because I tell myself I don't want to half ass my game, but in the end I don't think anyone will ever notice. I'm working on more index sheets, and it's important to note that although I only use two textures here, it works with more as long as you use a single base texture. I use an integer index to determine what texture I'm trying to place, so if I added something else that also blends with grass, it would work perfectly fine. Earlier I said that every tile knows its neighbors and corner neighbors. So every time a tile gets updated, it tells its neighbors that they also need to update. Overall, I'm really proud of myself how this pathing turned out. So I used that as motivation and pushed on. I added foliage and trees, but decided to split them up into two separate tabs on the tool because I'd never want to put two trees on one tile. They work the same way behind the scenes, however. 
They have a max density value and you can adjust a weight to simply place more or less of that type of billboard onto a tile. Trees are simply locked to a max density of one per tile. The billboards themselves are just a prefab with a sprite inside, placed randomly within the bounds of the tile. The tile references these by having a tree container and a foliage container, each with child containers with the index of whatever brush I have selected. So if I try to place two pieces of grass on a tile with three pieces, it will know to just remove one from the container. I know that sounds confusing, and I'm a visual learner, so I'll just quickly show you how it creates and references everything. So that's how it works. It can also do flowers, and I gave it a very pretty distortion shader to make it look like it's dancing in the wind. Since there's a million moving parts and I'm a self-proclaimed brilliant programmer, I added an optimization script that combines each height layer into its own mesh when I press play. Sure, it can make a very complicated mesh, but just look at these savings. Almost 60 bonus frames per second, and over 7500 draw calls saved. Eventually, I like to add partitioning to split up the mesh into pieces and cull those parts when they aren't being used on screen. But it's running fine for now. So now that I've told you how it all works, I'll show you how it works inside my game, and how fast I can iterate on environments with this tool now. So sit back and enjoy a little demo. Great work everyone. So that's how it all works. Great tool, but it's not without its bugs. The tiles can't hit every combination the paths can, but I also don't want to make 47 different modules. So I'll solve that problem with design over development. There's a few things I want to improve on the future. I need top corner pieces to cover up these gaps. I have a solution, I just haven't implemented it yet. However, if you want perfectly cubed tiles, then this won't be a problem you have to solve. I just like a little bevel on my edges. Second, 
I want to make a feature to make height pieces that just cover the outside. So I can add some height to the map. But first and foremost, I want to add a ramp feature. So I can split up tile maps as the character traverses up and down the environments. And solve my culling problem with variety in environment design. But for now that's all she wrote. If you have any questions, please direct them to a random comment section on Markiplier's channel with no context. Alright, I'll try to answer some questions. But I hope this video was enough to point you in the right direction, or at least get you started. And as always, cheers.